Hello everyone, I'm with Nikita, I'm with Andy, I'm with Phil and we're walking towards Magpie Mine just outside a village called Sheldon in Derbyshire well it says it's just outside Sheldon but I can't actually see a village anywhere but this was the last functioning lead mine in Derbyshire that closed in 1958 and there's loads of infrastructure still here so we're going to have a little look around So before we get to the buildings, Phil's just spotted the fact it's a little bit like Bonsall. What'd you say it's called again? Raking? Raking. Raking. So little lead mine, lead mine after lead mine. And I imagine that goes off into the distance as well. Because actually within these walls that you can see here, there's actually five lead mines. It's not just the one. You look at it, you think it's one. There's actually five different lead mines here. I'm not sure what's in those trees, but something's going off in there. There we go. It's even got some form of bracket on it. Anyone that knows me knows. I'm a bit obsessed with railway sleepers. These are reconstructions here. So as you can see, there's loads more raking going on. These are the main structures, obviously. These were all built in 1840, so they're not, I mean, they're old, but they're not hella hella old in terms of lead mining in Derbyshire. Um, but there's a lot of reconstructions here as well. So you've got a square, a square chimney, which is quite rare. You don't tend to see that, you tend to see the round ones like that there. I'm not sure what the thinking is behind changing the shape. So the, these would all be different mines then, I'm guessing, within this. So that's one there. I'm not sure what that one is, but Andy will no doubt tell us. This one, I believe, is Magpie. This is the big, you know, the money shot, basically. And then you've got one over there, you've got one there. And there's a, a water wheel there as well. So here we go, this is the, the restoration project then. It's amazing, they had colour photos all the way back then. So there we go, ah, so that's, that's the replica horse gin. So that's the thing that was in the distance there that they've rebuilt. There's a gunpowder store. The Cornish engine house, that was built in 1840, that was, but we'll come to that. So in terms of the different mines then, it's not actually pointing that out. I thought that it might, but it hasn't. Well, I'm going to come and have a walk up now, try and get to the other side of, of those main structures. So this mine was the, was the last functioning lead mine in Derbyshire, and obviously we've been doing loads of videos going down lead mines in the last couple of months closed in 1958 but it basically didn't really turn a profit from 1833 onwards there's a reason for that they say so as I said there's five different mine workings within this walled area and so in 1833 there was a dispute between the May Pit miners and the Magpie miners about what particular seam they were supposed to be working on whatever and so as part of that dispute a gang of magpie miners lit fires underground to smoke out the May pit miners to stop them, you know, obviously, you know, mining that particular seam. And they killed three of them. Um, it's known as the magpie murders. And so around that time, obviously, they were rounded up, they were arrested, and they spent a year in prison. About 24 lads from magpie mines spent a year in prison while they were being tried down in Derby, actually. And they were all acquitted. Every single one of them got off. And so when I looked at, you know, oh, geez, they got off, how, how, how do they get off? Various different things, but the main one was that the judge said, well, you, they were antagonized. That's a good excuse, isn't it? So as a result of that, the widows of those dead miners put a curse, they say, on Magpie Mine. And like I say, it never turned a profit after that. This is the Cornish engine house, this is known as. Got no roof on it now and no floors. Unfortunately, you can see the size of the beams because obviously they would have had equipment, heavy, heavy, heavy equipment sat on top of those. And this structure here, this came 
I believe, in the early 1950s. Um, and we might be able to get a view down, actually, into, into some sort of shaft there. Right, let's have a look down here, then. How far does that go down? It's quite hard to make out anything, actually. I can't see the bottom, though. That's for sure, but... See anything there? I can't see very well. But what I will tell you is the heat coming out of there. There is a lot of heat coming out of there, literally hitting you in the face. How far can you see down? For? I couldn't see that far down. I didn't even know it did that. It's <laughs> embarrassing. It's extremely neat brickwork as well. It's not rugged, round like we have on the shafts on Bonsall. This is proper. Yeah. Rectangular, symmetrical. Look at it all the way down. It's really well built. I wonder why, why they do it so neat and tidy on this one. So that, that we've just looked at, that, like I said, came in the 50s and it was run, I think, off of a little motor fill saying in, in that building. This here, this engine house, is called the Cornish Engine House because of a fella called John Taylor. So as I mentioned earlier, when the curse was put on this place after the, the Magpie murders of 1833, it basically went bankrupt and it closed for a bit. Um, partly due to the, the cost of lead, basically, you know, went down and so no one, you know, was making a profit or whatever. Also to do with flooding, because there's enormous problems with flooding here. Um, but then a guy called John Taylor, who's a Cornish tin miner and a, a very renowned engineer apparently back in the day, he took over this site and he built all these structures that you can see here today. So there you go. Go and have a look now, I think, at the old uh, gunpowder store. Again, stored quite a way away from the actual building itself, like um, like with all the other mines we've been down. Phil's telling me there's a little adit somewhere, which for people at home is basically a, a way into the mine, um, that you kind of go into the side of a hill. I'm not quite sure why it's called an adit, but um, someone, someone, oh, I nearly stacked it. I nearly had it, but someone uh, at home might know the answer to that. But we'll have a look, see if we can find that. You may hear a little bit of a, like, almost like a stammer in my voice. It's freezing, absolutely freezing up here. Um, it's been snowing after lo over the last couple of days, but there was a load of rain as well, so unfortunately there's not a lot of snow left, because that would have looked epic, wouldn't it? This scenery was covered in snow, but it is absolutely freezing. Here we go. So this is the gunpowder store. And again, these, these rakes are everywhere. There's Phil. See how big that, that um, chimney is, because Phil's about 20 foot tall himself. Um, okay, so these these are all little mine shafts. So there's one there. It's actually pretty close to the uh, to the gunpowder store. And there's the adit, I think, just there. You can see that. We'll come to that in a second. Let's get in here then. Oh, there's not much to see really. To be fair. These are collapses, they may well be collapses. This particular seam, it's called the Shutterbuck seam, I think, a particular seam of lead, was first officially opened in the 1600s. But as I said, this, this mine is, is officially, from records, functioning from 1740, but almost certainly before that. I don't know how small they were back then, but I ain't getting down that. Oh, mate, it is muddy and slippery. Try and get down. Kind of Whoa, nearly stacked it again. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. It just sort of ends, doesn't it? But I don't know if they've just filled that in. It's been filled in because this would have been an entrance down to get stuff out from another, I don't know, they call it another seam, or was it one of the, because you said there was five. Yeah, five different uh, just, mines within the within the, 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 the walls, apparently. So maybe this was the uh, adit to go in then. But that is small, isn't it? Compared to the adits we've been in. I mean, some of them have been small. We've been crawling on our bellies, but. That's a particularly small one, that one. Oh! <laughs> I'm on my belly. I'll tell my wife, and again, you know, at least you're consistent. What is it we mean, stacking it? There's that many collapses around here, you can't tell what's what. They, they are collapses, aren't they? I thought that. So that just, um, muddy knees now. That just shows the danger of it, doesn't it? Because so many of these would have collapsed around Derbyshire and around the country with people in them. It's just, oh, it's a bit of thinking about. I know. There you go, there's your, there's your slip evidence. 
It does look like Cornwall, doesn't it, Phil? I can just imagine that on a on a cliff edge as a as a as a tin mine. It's got that vibe about it, but I guess you know it was it was built by a Cornish tin miner, so that makes sense. So we're going to have a look. Phil just made a point that hopefully on the 18, sorry, on the 1914 map, that sort of tree line there that's walled, we should be able to see what that was because it was clearly something. We'll have a little look at it as as we leave. Um, but we'll go and have a look at this now, this replica. So here we go. This was called a gin, you're saying, Phil. Well, I've actually never heard that term before, unless it you know, comes in a bottle at 40% proof. Well, I don't know if it's gin or gin. It's hard to say gin, I think. There we go. Ah, see, see, it's built. Obviously, that's a replica. That's That's been rebuilt, obviously. Oh, Much like Brinsley headstocks will be. Don't get me started on that. Well, they were, you mean. Unbelievable. So here's another ledge. Oh yeah, you've got the torch. So this is a round one. This is this is a bit more like um, like the one at Bonsall. So yeah, see. and actually this. Let's see how far the, down. Yeah, I can't quite. I think I can just. Yeah, you can make out some debris. Oh, yeah, you can just see the. Bottom. Oh yeah, the bottom. Oh mate, that is deep though. Like a walkway. You can just spot it, can't you? That's crazy to think people are that far underground. Oh, there you go. That's opened it up. Wow, yeah. Well, that's interesting. You can just see it. Just see the bottom. Yeah. Mate, you would not want to be falling down that. So, that would have been pulled up then. The lead out of there would have been pulled up by a horse walking around here. Just literally just walking around in a circle. What a life. Yeah, I'm surprised they want some internal tramway system here. If yeah. It's all within one side and there's five shafts. You know, you either get, they're just horses, I guess. Yeah, you'd think, wouldn't you? Especially going all the way back, um, you know, to 1840, where, you know, they all had that, didn't they? Yeah, it's a bit of a surprise. And it's easy to put one in, it's all flat. Yeah. It would have been great, because there would have definitely been remnants. Of so we randomly mentioned Brinsley headstocks there. It's obviously nothing to do with this. It's a, it's a coal mine in Nottinghamshire. But it was actually the first walk me and you did together, wasn't it, Phil? Yeah. And we went and we had a look, and there's these wooden headstocks. Um, I'll put a link to that video in, in the description to this one. Amazing that the fact that that structure was still there. Well, the council there, is it Broxlow Council? Part of Nottinghamshire, yeah. Nottinghamshire Council. They cut them down, chopped them up. These are like original headstocks. I mean, and now they're talking about, are they going to put up a replica? It's like, what's wrong with you? What's the point? Yeah, ridiculous. Just destroying yet more history from this country. But there you go. I mean, you know they're going to be capped off but <laughs> because there's snow in them. I ain't walking in it. So here we go. Phil made a point that, you know, there's quite a lot of Druid sites around this part of Derbyshire and they had these kind of, you know, circular areas where they would have, you know, rituals and stuff like that. But uh, it, it, it looks more recent than that. I mean, they go as far back as the Bronze Age, they do, but there's definitely something going on here. Whether it's another lead shaft or, or whatever, I'm not entirely sure. I think yeah, that's, that's a big one in the middle, yeah. I oh, wow. There's a meteorite landed here yeah. a thousand years ago. Or that's that's some old... Did the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's a big shaft, though, that one. Yeah. Stop laughing. Look at that. that it is like a meteor strike, isn't it? Yeah. But it's kind of quite cool how it's surrounded by trees, yeah. literally 360. Quaint, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. For goodness knows how deep that goes once you, you dug out whatever they've capped it with. This looks like calculated planting as well. That is strange, I've never seen that before. I've never seen it. So you would have thought that there'd be roots down there for this. So if they planted new ones, they'll just probably mingle with them down below and this will eventually grow like that crazy person who chopped the tree down in Adrian's Wall recently. Oh, about that goodness, one. that was yeah, so outrageous. If, if they can do this here, I guess they're going to have to do that there, aren't they? Yeah. We've gone full Alan Titchmoss today, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, well, my God, too much. Yeah, well, that's weird. I've never seen anyone try and grow a tree within a tree before. Well, there you go. So that's us. Just a short explore around Magpie Mine, the last functioning lead mine in Derbyshire. Thank you, as always, for watching. I've got the lads behind me. Um, and subscribing and commenting. Also, if you if you... If there's somewhere around near you that you're like, oh mate, you need to get up here, please comment below and, and we'll, we'll, we'll try and find a way to get up there and get an explore. 
as always we'll see you next time see you later boys yeah